Hello friends, today we'll be replacing the battery on my 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you guys something cool I noticed with my battery health. So right here you can see it's 75%, but under load it drops down to 73.5 and sometimes 71%. So the first thing we're going to do is completely discharge the computer. I used some weird online website that was supposed to load test your computer to run the battery down. It doesn't really matter how you do it. So the reason I've decided to replace this laptop battery is because it is swollen, which makes it very hard to type on as it rocks back and forth, as you can see here. Also see that the device no longer correctly closes on the corners. If I squeeze, you can see that the screen flexes a little bit. This is the battery I've decided to go with. It's off AliExpress, but it's also available on Amazon. I paid a total of $68, including shipping and tax. This battery also includes a plastic scraping tool and the two screwdrivers, which is all the tools we're going to be using today. The screwdrivers included are a 3.1mm and a 2.3mm P5 pentalope bit. Looking at the battery here, we can see that there is a plastic cover over the circuit board. This is to prevent a dent on the bottom housing of the laptop from shorting any of the electronics on that circuit board out. On the back side, there's this blue piece of plastic that covers the pre-installed adhesive. It appears they forgot to remove this cosmetic layer on top of it as well. Flipping back to the front side here, you'll notice that there's this plastic layer over the entire battery. This is to hold all the cells together and to make it easier to install. Now we're going to start by removing the bottom cover. Since these screws are of different lengths, I recommend you remember which hole you took the screw out of by placing it on a mat. I recommend you wear safety glasses while doing this, and you can see I hold my finger over the screw while removing it because the bottom housing popped up about half an inch whenever I removed a screw as the battery was very swollen. Once we've got the screws out, this bottom cover is going to pull right up. If your battery is not swollen like mine, this may require some force as this bottom cover has two plastic clips on it. Since the provided screwdriver was not magnetic here, you can see me popping out these screws and placing them on a mouse pad for me to remember where I took them out of. Here's a look at the inside face of the bottom cover. As you can see, there's this black sticker on it. This is to prevent a short circuit from occurring if it were to be dented from the outside. I'm just going to be wiping it down with a Lysol wipe here. This computer has not been open for approximately four years now. Now with the bottom cover out of the way, we're going to remove these two screws that hold the circuit board for the battery. So you can see here these screws have a little bit of blue thread locker on them. Here's a reference photo showing where those two screws are located. Then we're going to remove a piece of tape that's covering the circuit board, and we're going to remove the two screws that hold a plate down, which protects the ribbon cable for the trackpad. These have red thread locker on them from the factory. Here's a reference photo showing where those two screws are located. Now we can disconnect the trackpad ribbon cable and we can disconnect the battery, but I forgot to do so in this video. Now we're going to use our provided plastic scraping tool and start whittling away at the battery adhesive. The provided scraping tool is the perfect width for the job as it is the height of the battery. I found it easiest to scrape the two cells on either end of the battery pack first and then to work on the cells above the trackpad last. Right here you can see the moment I realized that the battery was still connected and I used the plastic scraping tool to disconnect it. After approximately 40 minutes of scraping, I was able to remove the battery. Don't be an idiot like me. Remember to support the cells and not to have them dangle from their electrical cable. Looking at the back of the original battery, you kind of get a sense for how the adhesive was placed. So you can see a lot more adhesive is used on those two cells underneath the trackpad. I also see that I appear to have broken this flat piece of plastic that was holding one of these middle cells to the circuit board. Flipping the battery background, you can see there's these four white dots in the corners. I believe these are used by the machine that places this battery inside the computer to correctly position it. 
Another interesting observation is that this is an 11.36 volt battery and you can see that there's four beefy connectors going from the batteries to the circuit board to on either side of the trackpad battery. So that likely means that the left three cells and the right three cells are in series. So it's a two parallel three series configuration. Here you can kind of see me trace out the wire route for the two outer cells with my finger. At this point you've probably seen other videos on YouTube, mainly those from device repair shops where the new battery is immediately installed, but I've decided to go through the trouble of using these plastic scraping tools to remove the old adhesive residue to ensure that our new battery will have good adhesion with the housing. While I do this, I think it's worth pointing out that the black piece of metal that covers the trackpad is raised and is not flat with the rest of the area that the battery is being installed in. So when you're trying to scrape to remove the old battery, if you're scraping from the sides, you have to be aware that you may just be hitting the side of the trackpad. Now we're going to do a test fit to make sure that I bought the correct battery and I'm going to think about and practice how I want to drop the battery in. Now we're going to peel back this blue piece of plastic that's covering the adhesive and we're going to drop the battery in place. And we're going to peel the plastic off this side of the battery as well and we're going to push down on the battery to ensure the adhesive has good contact. Now we're going to connect our new battery and we're going to reinstall the two screws that hold down the battery circuit board. And we're going to put our trackpad ribbon cable back down and reconnect it. And we're going to put the cover back in place for the connector, reinstall the two screws, hold that down as well. This is an optional step, but I'm going to use a microfiber cloth and the plastic scraping tool to clean the channel that the back cover sits in. Now that we're ready to reinstall the rear cover, you should pay attention to these two plastic pegs that are attached to it. Those pegs are supposed to fit inside of these clips on the laptop itself. As you can see, we're going to line up those clips with these pegs. We're just going to lay the back cover down and then we're going to push down where those two pegs are located. Unfortunately, in my case, this back cover is so warped that even if I get the clips to lock in, they just pop right back out. So we're going to give up on my hopes and dreams of reinstalling those plastic clips and we're going to put the screws back. Now for the moment of truth. Here are the specs of the new battery. You can see a cycle count of 1 and a full charge capacity of 9044 milliamp hours, which is good. I calibrated this battery as the provider instructions told me to by fully charging it and applying the discharge to zero. And now we can see even under heavy load with a low state of charge, the battery's design capacity does not drop below 100%. I didn't bother showing in the video as it turned out to be ineffective, but I tried to clean the computer out with a can of compressed air, but it was ineffective because I was too lazy to remove the fans and most dust is probably trapped between the fans and the heat sink. But while using the compressed air, apparently this part blew out and I found it on the floor after reassembly. It's the piece of rubber that sits on top of the screws for the hinge. Thanks for watching.